right, this is leaning out of the door of the Bishop Rock, looking down all those dog steps. That platform down there is called the Set Off. That goes all the way round. And then there's another flight of steps, dog steps. Just see them down there, go down to the rocks. And out to sea over there. If I can find it, there's the boy. There's to be a boy there for when they did the release by boat. The winch would uh, be operated from that boat, that boy. Right now, I have my back to the door and going in. This is the first room you come to. There's the steps we have to go up. Up there, they're quite steep in this place. There's the ceiling, and everything is stowed where you can find it. There's a freezer right at the base of the tower. Still in the base, that cylinder object down there, that's the uh, tank below us for fresh water. It used to be collected off the roof of the lighthouse, now it's delivered by helicopter. Right, here we are at the door. It's way about the tongue. And then you get these huge, great big bolts or locks that jam in place. And this one, the same there. You can see the sea would have to work very hard to get into here. Okay, it's time to go up to the first level. These are all metal steps in this tower. A bit awkward. Right, that's the flight we just came up. We're in a tiny little room. There's the ladder going up to the next level. And this is the room, it's full of fuel tanks. On the opposite side of the room, there's a fuel tank. And there's the contents up there. And tucked down there is a hand pump to pump in up. Right, there's the flight we just came up. There's the next one. And we're on our way up there. See how thick the tower is through that. You turn around, there's the door. Engine room. the engine room with a little uh, wooden lock attachment in place to keep it jammed shut. Now back to the next flight which is straight up through there. like the veg store. You can see that's quite a deep window as well. About five feet thick by the look of it. There's a flight going on up that way. And we're going into this room in here. And in we go. 
Right, the first thing you can see is all the spaces jammed full of stuff. More fuel tanks. Washing hanging up. Another window over there. Rubbish bin. Cotton waste for wiping up any mess. The shower. Door open on the shower. This is all new, this is. Another window. And surprise, surprise, a flush toilet. When I was out here last, which was about 10 years ago, it was still the Bucket and Chuck It Brigade. So all keepers had to know which way the wind was blowing when they uh, came to throw the contents over the side. Back outside, up the next level, which is straight up there. At this level, there's another window. You can see the windows are now getting thinner in their thickness. The usual mod comms, one of them. This is the kitchen level. And here it is in here, going in. There's the door we just came in. The window behind. Cupboards up above. Kitchen sink. And there's the little seating arrangement for the free keepers. I'm now stood on the uh, by the kitchen table just to show you all the area of the kitchen area. TV, microwave cooker, there's a door back out. Fridge below. The kitchen area. There's a closer view of the cooker. And a little funnel going up. Not thrown out the window on the next level, if I remember rightly. Right, a quick test. This is with me back hard against the uh, the window ledge by the kitchen sink. There's one step. Two steps, three steps, four steps, five steps wide. Back outside and starting up the next level, which should be up there. It's a bit dark. Here we go. At least the steps aren't so steep now, you don't need those ropes to pull yourself up. Window out that way. And the fan. Steps further up. And this is the bedroom level. There it is in there. Right, and into the bedroom. The first thing you'll notice is the beds are what they call banana bunks. They're curved. Just go once around the top of the room. Drop down, got a fan going because it's so hot in here. All the mod cons. <laughs> we're now coming past the middle bunk. There's the others unused. Right, you usually have three keepers in here at uh, any one time. Three on, three off. And that middle bunk, that's keeper I came out with today just to do this filming. He's here for the duration. He's the only keeper here at the moment. Um, he's come out with the automation crew who are going to rip this place apart. So um, that's uh, Julian van der Schoot, the keeper. And that's where he lives for the month. And if you noticed it really is a banana bedlock. 
see then the mattresses are curved, which makes it very difficult to make the bed because they don't make the sheets curved, they're all oblong. And all you have for privacy is a curtain. And sometimes you're lucky if you get a sea view. And there, as you can see again, the windows are getting narrow as you go up. Back hard against the bunk. It's the door we came in, flying suit hanging up, ready to go. And that's the bunk ladder for if anybody has the top bunks. When we've got so-called guests on board, you know, the workmen when they come out to maintain engines. Or in this case, this place will be full up with all the automation crew. I just check the width of this room. One step, two steps, three steps, four, and hard up against the door. Door open on our way up to the next level. Oh, as a matter of uh, curiosity, if you're wondering what this is on the window there, on the windowsill, tied in, it's just a cut down uh, teapot container. That's uh, what we will delicately describe as the potty. It saves running down several flights to use the loo in the middle of the night if you cut short. Right up to the next level, which is straight up there. And off we go. Another window, getting narrower still as you go up, another potty, sea view of course. Next level goes up there, and this one is unique to lighthouses, it's the so-called sitting room. Right, walking into the living room. I understand there is a living room on the Eddystone lighthouse as well. But I haven't been there. Right, there's a window there. Comes at the top, books. More cupboard space. Some signs and another window, two windows. More cupboard space behind there. And that's the background to the door. So if we drop down. There's some chairs. There's more chairs in here than there normally is. Um, the keepers brought some out for the visitors that are coming. Little cupboard there. There's the park air radio. That's our link with a helicopter. The other radio I link with almost anywhere else. TV. And round to this corner. A fish chart. And a dartboard. Right, now on our way out to the next level. And the next level, straight up through there. Off we go. Just pass some fire extinguishers. Right, another window. And glass see through there. Probably see my reflection. This is another engine room. This one will contain two uh, diesel generators. The two downstairs drive the lens, one on, one off. Uh, these two up here, these are for the fog compressors to drive the fog horn. One on again, one off. And on my right, are two little uh, domestic generators, one on, one off again normally. That's normally on during the day. If you want to shut the big engines off, you put one of those on and it uh, just runs 
the TV and stuff like that, the fridge and freezers. Controls for the, all the engines. You can see this room is fairly cluttered. Now the tanks up there, which the, the uh, generators build up compressed air to drive the fog on. And some right above my head. And of course, station batteries. If all else fails, onto, onto battery. Different view of same room. Looking back towards the door we just came in on the right, there's the uh, compressed air tanks up there. There's one of the windows. And there's another one there with wire mesh on it. And I'm up against one of the engines here. There's the other one there. And then there's those little generators. And the next level is up through this flight, up through there. This is an aerial view of that same room, the upper engine room. Right, on our way up to the next level, which, strictly speaking, is the last level, the lens, except this lens has got two uh, levels to it. It's a huge lens. So up we go. That engine room we were just in, when this automation crew are finished with their first phase, which they're here for now, that will all be ripped out. Right, here's the lens. It's a huge great one, goes up forever. Two levels. And there's a catwalk above, a very skinny catwalk. And down there is the way we just came up. This should be extremely difficult to film because it's so uh, such tight space. That was the other keeper. Go around this way. Here's the way up to the catwalk above. There's the keeper going up because we are expecting the helicopter. And that above outside is the helicopter platform. Keep going around. See everywhere is absolutely cluttered. And that's the way out to the next level. I'll keep going around in here just to show you. And there we are, up against the uh, top of the steps we just came up. See under here, everything is just cluttered in where you can get it. Space in a lighthouse, the tower rock out to sea, is really wherever you can find something you stuck it. And this, when I was out here 10 years ago, before they put the flush toilet in, this is where the uh, Elson bucket was. So you used to have to sit on the rear, and if you heard any of the other keepers come in, you had to learn how to whistle. And then out the door it went. But as you can see, two electric uh, optic drive motors, one on, one as standby. And it goes up through there. This is looking up into the lens itself. Let's see if I can get up in there. You see it's a huge great lens. And this also, the top half will be removed. So it's just one Diddy light bulb in it. And it's got a range of 28 miles. It's 2,600,000 candle power. It does two white flashes every 15 seconds. The fog signal on this station is a super typhoon, and it sounds twice every 90 seconds. And this station was established in 1858, and the height to the top of the tower is 51 meters, it's about 144 feet. And the height of the light that's up to this bulb here is 44 meters. That's the little uh, ladder we just came up. There's the lens and the bulb on my right. And there's the next ladder there going up to the next level. 
inside, so I'll have a go at going up there. All right, there's the ladder I just came up. There's the bottom half of the lens down there. With, and this is up here. I have to be careful where I'm moving now. Because if I step back, there's a great big hole here behind. There's another lens, another bolt there, sorry. And you can hear the helicopter arriving with the uh, automation crew now. inside on the second level of the lens on a tiny platform you can see my foot down there see how wide it is and outside the automation crew have come on there's Julian the, the keeper who's going to be out here with them lowering all the stores down goes down below there and it's the slow old horse getting it down all those steps and finding space to hide it off and there's all the rest ready to come in. gallery door we just came through and then go out around here there's one or two galleries there's stuff everywhere because there's these people just come on board there's the red food boxes gas bottles so, it's going to be very windy around here that's all the way around almost to the door. There's a door down there. Next level up there. And there's one half of the lens. The other half way above. We just came up on the second gallery and there's the roof up there, the helipad. Just go around here to show you this one. It's a bit more roomy up here, although quite windy today. Mind I don't trip over. 
all this gear about is from, as I said, the automation crew. What's your helmet? Yeah, it is. <coughs> yep. This is a view of the top lens. And there's a squall coming in behind me, so I won't linger too long. And that's where we're headed next, I hope, up on the helipad. Safety nets. There's the way up. 